Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV, where we do dumb stuff and talk about dumb stuff. Dumb stuff subject number one today is the War Wagon. Now, if you guys have been living under a rock and haven't seen this car, it's been around the internet quite a few times on several videos. Last one was with the Boosted Boys. We actually drove this thing into the ocean, which turned out to be fun, but not really a great idea as far as for the car itself. And I haven't driven it since then. It's been six months this car has been sitting. So we're gonna go around it and take a look at all the things that are wrong with it now. So as far as damage, the first thing that went was the starter. Actually, a couple days after we got back, the starter started dragging and then it won't start the car anymore. I know that's from being in the salt water, but I got a new starter for it just to get us going for now. Uh, the other thing I am actually concerned about is the alternator, which has seemed to be seems to be working now. But the last time I went underwater with this car, the alternator went out. So I'm hoping that it'll stay working, but I'm, I'm skeptical. The brakes don't work. The, f the brake pedal just goes right to the floor. I have no brake pressure at all. Uh, now this is from a separate incident. This is where I actually forgot the key when we were down there and we had to rip all that out. So you start this thing with a screwdriver now, that's a problem. Uh, the steering wheel, it's perfectly, uh, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong there. What in the hell? Um, there's some, uh, there's a little bit of spider web action going on there. Uh, nothing a blowtorch can't fix, so that's not a big deal. The tires rub, which I think is probably from when we hit a huge rock with our front bash bar. I guess if you want to call it a bash bar, it didn't hold up very well, but basically hitting this pushed those bars back, pushed the wheels back, and now the tires rub. So I think all we really need to do there is just put a bar in that's not bent, um, but we may be changing more than that bar, and I'll tell you why. Well, let's address the main problem with this car, a problem that it's always had, and that is that it's just, it just doesn't have any power. This has a hundred and well, when it was new, it had 108 horsepower. It is completely stock. I think there's a header on it. Um, does that really count? You know, I don't know. So over 30 years, has it really got the same amount of power as it did? I don't think so. So we're probably talking 95 horsepower, being generous. That's not enough, okay? That's not enough. It needs more. So the solution there, that's the discussion for today. How are we gonna get more power? Um, I think, really, I don't want to mess with the D-Series. I know that's going to ruffle some feathers, but you know what? This is my car. I'm going to do what I want. And I think that what we need to do is completely ditch the entire drivetrain. I think we need to get rid of the D. I think we need to get rid of the brittle as glass RT transmission. There's a lot of reasons for that. One, mainly because it you can't get parts for it. And if it breaks, the end. I, Maybe you could find another one, but it also doesn't have parts. You can't repair it if it breaks. So it's kind of a one and done transmission. So that's gotta go. The other thing is the rear end. I have some ideas on how we could make that a little bit better. I think what we could do is a solid axle swap in the old war wagon. Yeah, solid axle swap in the back. So as it turns out, the 86 to 87 Civic Wagon has the exact proper gear ratio that will work in place of the newer wagon's rear differential. And I think that's what we're gonna do. So that leads us to the main question here. What engine do we put in the war wagon? Guys, I think, I think we need to go J series here. I seriously considered the K, there's a lot of upside to it, but I can't get away from the fact the J is gonna have all the torque and that is what we really need for an off-road vehicle. Why not go J and do a K-series adapter to a K-series all-wheel drive transmission? I think that's gonna be genius. I think it's gonna work really well. The only downside I can see is that the K-series does not have the crawler gear ratio like the D-series engine has, which is one of the main things that makes this car work with that puny engine. But I think the torque the J has will overcome that. I think that this will work and I wanna try and you know that could lead to other things who knows you know maybe we get the j to k done do the drive line and then ooh, i don't know maybe put some turbos on there i think it's gonna be cool so why don't 
I, I think I'm gonna let you guys decide whether or not we should do that. Uh, you know, my videos typically get about two to 300 views. I'm hoping that this one gets at least a couple of hundred, maybe more. Um, but let's try a like challenge. This will be the first one I've ever done, but let's see if we can get 100 likes to do a J to K swap in the war wagon. 100 likes and we'll do it. I'll see you in the next video. Why does it always end this way? <laughs>